has to go. So why why is there so much violence attributed to you know, Muslims or you know over in the Middle East? I mean, you know, you know what? And, and again, from, excellent question. From from an American perspective, excellent question. It all seems to revolve around the religion. No, excellent and, question. I, I'm gonna tell you why. If you go back, say, 300 years ago, in a place called Palestine, Palestine, Muslims were in power. People were living within this particular area, Jews and Christians as well. They didn't have a problem. They were living in peace. When Europe was massacring, were about to massacre the Jewish people, they were fleeing to the safe haven with the Muslim lands whether it be in Spain or Morocco, whatever, they were going there, their life was protected by the Muslims. What happened in the Middle East when the turn of power changed with the Balfour Declaration by the British and others and so on, they created this political instability um, and the mismatch of power and so on and so forth. That created an unfair, unjust regime in there where Muslims have become the ones who are now victims, their lands being taken away slowly and slowly and eventually the whole landscape changed that Muslims are now the minority with a little bit of land, everything else now taken by the occupying forces. Which so is of course, Israel. so yeah, yeah, of course, and of course there will be resentment, there will be anger, because this is what happens, if someone comes to your home and you listen, well, you know what, this is all mine now. Your bathroom is mine, your lounge is mine, your kitchen is mine. You know what? You can go to that shed and live over there. You would not feel happy. You will resist. So what they're trying to do in stopping that resistance, and just injustice has happened already, but they want to even stop people from resisting. Initially, the Palestinians were resisting in the father that you know of by peaceful resistance. That didn't work. In fact, they were even more curved because of their resistance and so on. Then they had a political um, resistance with, you know, some weapons and whatever they had. Maybe initially with weapons and whatever they could get hand off. That's because that's their struggle for freedom and oppression. So, in the Middle East, all this violence are happening because of this. And who created all of that? Not the Muslims. Muslims are the victims. There are other oppressors who are creating this one. And this has a ripple effect all over, all over the world where it seems that like everyone is supporting Israel as a nation and not supporting the oppressed nation, the community who are Muslims, the Palestinians, the Palestine, the Palestinians. Okay? So the Muslims are angry all everywhere else as well. So when you say oppressor, do you mean Israel? The occupying mean, force is the oppressor. Right? Israel or or Judaism or No no no. It has nothing to do with Judaism. Right. People who were Jews were practicing their Judaism in their own quarters, right. freely, openly, peacefully, in tolerance. Judaism is not the problem with issue there, it's Zionism. Zionism. Zionism is a religion on its own. It doesn't have to be, an atheist could be a Zionist. There, is, there are Muslim Zionists too, I hear. So, so <laughs> America and their relationship with Israel, that creates the, you know, the, I, I, I don't know if I want to use the term hatred, but you know, you've heard people call America the great oppressor. People can have resentment and anger with America because it's siding with an oppressor. It's not only supporting the oppressor, it's facilitating the oppressor, it's safeguarding the oppressor, it's promoting the oppressor. So be, by doing so, when you glorify a terrorist, there's a law now that you are actually committing a crime because you are supporting, encouraging, promoting terrorism. America, with its support, is glorifying terrorism. So it's a criminal in the eyes of many people. Right. So does the Muslim uh, religion support the terrorist acts? Of course not. The bomb, I, I don't know. No, I'm serious. Of course, That's not. A real of course not. Because no? Islam gives people the freedom to choose what religion they want to follow, right? If you want to accept Islam, fine. If you don't want to accept Islam, that's your choice. If, but, but a lot of these but, acts are but, done but, in the name of but Allah. People, when they take in their own hands 
to commit the acts of violence against innocent people, of course this is wrong. Islam doesn't condone any of that. If a country fights another country, you don't con consider that terrorism. Because one country is fighting another country, whatever the reason. But if you fight an innocent community, an innocent individual or an innocent state, that is terrorism. So whoever does that, whether it be Christians and Jews and the Muslims and atheists, you're committing an acts of terror and terrorism, which is totally not, accept not acceptable. So, you, you know, so in America, these acts of terrorism that, you know, we hear are being done in, you know, in the name of Allah, right? Can I, can I just yeah, yeah. switch back? Yeah. The acts of terrorism that America is committing sure. for years and years, everywhere in the world. Sure. What are you as American doing for that? You seem to be focusing on the response to this terrorist act. Yes. No, 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 I understand. To understand, no, to understand yeah. Yeah. why in this landscape you have these pockets of terrorism happening, you yeah. call it terrorism, yeah. this is a response to American aggression. So what are you as Americans, I suppose you're Americans, right? What are you doing to stop America from these aggressions? That will solve the problem of any of these pockets coming and committing here and there, blowing the Twin Towers and blowing this and that, that would stop there. Because before America did all those things, did people go to America, or the Americans themselves start blowing up buses, trains and big buildings? It was never heard of. It's only when America has become the aggressor, certain people, which we don't agree with, are committing a tit for tat response. Right. So the solution is remove the aggression so any resistance or counter response that comes will be eliminated, will be prevented. Right, so, so if all of that stopped though, you don't believe that it's settled because you want your land back, right? In, in Palestine? Palestine? Yeah. If the land has been taken away, if I if I take your land, if your home, no, I'm, I'm asking. I'm, I'm, asking I'm, no, no, I'm, I'm trying. It's not my view. We're talking about a view of people who are sound in their rational judgment. If somebody has taken your land wrongly, what it is required is simply give the land back and say sorry, and that's settled. But if you saying I'm not going to give you land back then the problem will remain. That is the reality check that people need to have. Unfortunately, people are not thinking that way. They're thinking, how do we stop all this stress activity? Let's have prevent strategy in UK. Let's have X, Y, and Z. It is not going to solve the problem because there will be a certain individual who will take on their own hands out of their desperation through their maybe emotional stance, not thinking rationally, and they commit something bad in response, which Islam doesn't agree with. But to prevent these kind of things are happening, you have to look at their grievances and you have a problem. England are not doing that. In fact, what they're doing is, is trying to, you know, there's a tap that's leaking. Let's put some sedative over it. It's never going to fix the problem. Put a pot underneath the dropping deep, dripping water. It's not going to solve it. Concentrate on the root cause. Eliminate the root cause. Which is, what is the root cause in your in your? No, no, not of... mine. You tell me. What is the root cause in Palestine? I'm not going to say anything. I'm going to ask you as an American. What is the root cause of problem in Palestine? Occupied land. Right? Occupied land. I, I'm not going to say anything. I, you I'm... tell me. So occupied land of what? Who's the occupier and whose land is being occupied? Well, in, in so I, I don't know all the history of you know, but I think from your you should know. I know. I yeah. think this is a fair question but, though, but what you think of but it. For my view, not important. We are talking yeah. about... So then why is a, our view important? Well, because you're America, yeah. because you're Americans, are not solving the problem. Right. So you need to go and understand what the root cause is. So when you realize occupation, people's usurping and stealing people's land and so on and so forth, seems to be the problem that has caused all this tension around the world, give the land back to its owners. 
the real owners. So if it belong to the Jewish people, give it to the Jewish people. If it belong to the Christian people, give it to the Christian people. If it belong to the atheist people, give it to the atheist people. Give it to the owners who are the rightful owners of the land. Right. It so happened that it was the Palestinians who had the majority of the land. They didn't just simply sell it off, it was taken from them. So when everybody was living in Palestine, cohabiting together, I think you answered my question. Who owned the land? Everybody owned their... Go back before 19, say, 20s. Go back in the 1880s, for example, an arbitrary date. Look at the landscape, look at the map. Who were the indigenous or who were the people living there? Okay, not someone who's a tourist there, people who had their own lands. And you will see the answer. I'm surprised, not you, I'm surprised by the media brainwashing of Americans and Europeans that they didn't even know who's the occupying force and who is the aggressor and the, and the victims. And that's why they never is pressurized the government to make the right judgment. The government with their own particular interest, they will do what they want to do because they have an interest. But if the people realize that that is wrong, they would have solved the matter a long time ago. So the people need to be aware, need to be educated. Unfortunately, the governments are not allowing people to educate it. There is a whole program of media brainwashing. Brainwashing to know who is the victim and who is the criminal. That's the problem. So we, so we want to see that people waking up to it, you know, like um, how many Americans they don't consider the 9-11 is Muslim terrorists on it. They think it's a job by the government themselves, right? Many. The government calls them conspiracy theorists. Why are they thinking that way? Why are they conspiracy theorists? Is it because they love the Muslims? Of course not. Because the circumstances tells us something fishy going on. So these people are waking up. So we want the general public to wake up to solve these problems of the world. And you will see that America will be a great nation. Sure. In the eyes of people. So, um, so I, I understand. I understand you, and I agree. There is brainwashing. Let's say I think, if I'm not, not mistaken, I, you might know. I, I, isn't Israel like the Jewish people that are occupying Israel? Isn't their argument that this was our land way farther back before? Even before that, it was the original Palestinians, and the descendants of them, the Arab Muslims. So they don't win even there. Okay, so, yeah. so what is their argument though? What is their like, no, they, this they, is our... The Zionists have many arguments. They think whole of Saudi Arabia is theirs. The Iraq and Saudi Arabia, part of Iran and so on. That's the Zionist, the world view in their landscape. They want, they want it all. Who gave it to them? God has already guaranteed that this is your land? Of course, this is not your land. If that was your land, what happened to it? So, lands come and go. But what the Muslims in Palestine are saying, you, with all your sanity, sanity today, you know, like a primitive individuals in the past where it's all about like, you know, uh, hunting, where you can hunt and hunt everything, not only animals and the people and kill them all, loot everything and it becomes yours. Now you're human beings, you understand and appreciate the differences, whether they're, you know, white or black, or whatever, you want to live human beings. Right. So people's understanding us, bit more grounded on humanity compared to some other times. So they're saying, you have devoured our land, taken it by force, okay? We're not talking about a million years ago. A million years ago, it wasn't even yours to begin with. Like America was not for Americans. It was indigenous people. Right. Give it back to them then. I agree. <laughs> right? stole it so so yeah. the question is not about this question is the oppression that is committed in the last few hundred years. That's where the problem is. The solution like one state model, two state model, so on, you can try all that mess. Unless you haven't addressed the grievance of the people, there is always going to be pockets of problems here and there. You will never you cannot stop people. When injustice is being committed against any human being, sooner or later they will rise up. Some strong from them, emotional from them will rise up and they might do something which is not good. That's why we need to really make people not have these grievances. So, you know, why do I have the right to mock you and your mother and your wife and your father and so on and so forth? Why do I have the right to insult you? I don't. 
but this is what the society is doing now. It's like, you know what? You can mock your father, your mother, your prophet, your god, and so on and so forth. If you mock my parents, I will be angry. I would not be happy. I would say, what, 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 what are you doing? What's wrong with you? If you mock my God, who I love more than my parents, I would be even more angrier. So this is what's happening in the society, people doing this. Why are they doing this? In the name of freedom? That's not how you bring people together. That's the division that you make. That's the division you're trying to make. If you want to unite, look, the Quran says, do not insult even other gods, lest they insult Allah back. So even there are other false gods, we are told not to even insult them. You can disagree and say, they're not worthy of worship, but we have no right to mock and insult. Like, so wouldn't that be like, if you, you disagree with them, say, you disagree with them, you say out loud, that God isn't real, our God is real. Couldn't that, couldn't that kind of be like an insult? Couldn't that be seen as an insult? What is an insult? It, it's, it's to the person. The person can define it for themselves as an insult. There's no... Uh, no, no, no. You can't just define whether you're so a man or... An insult, look, look. The, the, the current trend is, you can define whether you're a man or a woman. I mean, can I define, okay, I'm actually a dragon trapped in a human body. No. Why not? Because that's not how you are. No, no. I am a dragon trapped, key, hear the word, trapped in a human body. I am a female trapped in a male body. Okay, no. That's the trend, right? You know the trend. That's what people are trying to, all this LGBTQ no. business and so yes, on. Sure, sure. You and I may disagree. That this yes. doesn't work with us. It doesn't work and, with us. And to them, us disagreeing is an insult to them. Now, the, how, can that be, now, how can that be an insult? We are simply disagreeing. Disagreement. We, we don't think it's an insult, but they think it's an insult. That's well, what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. They need to understand what insult is then. Well, and I think what he's saying. That's what I'm saying. Is, they see it as an insult. We do not. It's all about do. seeing. It's, you it's need to understand what an insult is. Disagreement is not an insult. Right. I can disagree with you on something, you can disagree with me on something. Right. That doesn't mean I'm insulting you or you're insulting me. Sure. I but I, I, I do think, to his point, that you know, I can tell you as, you know, an Amer even walking through London, right, that, um, you know, with, with so many people in the Middle East that, you know, it's like there's so much animosity because you're either white or American or whatever. Right? And I think it's because, you know, something as simple as believing differently, right? The, say the Middle Eastern people, if they do have this outlook about the American white, that's a social conditioning created by the American themselves. So they're the ones to be blamed partly too, because they have created a social conditioning of a large number of people, if that is true, I'm taking your word for truth, and they have created this grievance within them. If they didn't have that condition, that would be removed. It's if, then this. This is the condition that's been met, created by the people themselves. So, an insult is something that is derogatory. Okay. Something that offends you in such a way that because I have made some ridicule, some mocking, something of that nature. Because if I say, for example, you are beautiful, that's not an insult. Sure. But if I said you're ugly like a pig or something, I'm making derogatory statements. That is when you can say I'm making an insult. In that case, what if, I'm, what if I just say you're crazy? Like I don't like. What if like someone out of their mind, like someone on the street who just obviously is not right in the head, they say they come up to me and say you're ugly, and I'm just like okay, and I walk away unbothered, uninsulted, even though they said an insult, I'm uninsulted. Why is like tell tell your wife you're ugly. <laughs> no, yeah, but again, like it's. <laughs> would you? Would you? I'm sure you've been married for a number of years, and you'd know exactly what it means. So we should not say things which people will get hurt. If I say I disagree with you, there's no reason for you to be hurt because I don't have to accept what you believe in. You don't have to accept what I believe in. But it doesn't mean I'm insulting you or you're insulting me. You have to make that distinction. But to disagree is not is kind of in a way to say I'm right and you're wrong because we I believe something else than you believe. I'm right, you're wrong. That's not that insult either. You can say I'm wrong and I would not say it's an insult. Okay. So because that has nothing to do with an insult. It, it, it mean, sure. I mean, you can say that, but people, it's it's a it's just a, such people a people who get offended saying this is an insult. They need a reality check. I'm, I'm, exactly. I'm not. I'm not saying that it's just 
but it's saying insult is just such a broad word like people can take anything as an insult it's just hard to specifically define they need to understand what insult is then right people need to when we say for example something is good you need to understand what good is because the good doesn't mean something that is smelling mm -hmm. foul it has its own connotation conceptually right the language that we're speaking the words have meanings mm -hmm. insult what kind of meaning does it have good meaning in the dictionaries no that oh it's okay for me to be insulted everyone says no i don't want to be insulted mm -hmm. and they might by today's convention give legal right to people like it's okay for you to insult others but we're saying we shouldn't even have that right okay because that is not a good thing to insult and mock and ridicule so you think things are by that case words are either good or bad it's it's no, no, there are neutral words there's neutral words of course okay so i mean i just, I just want to make that understand okay yeah, yeah yeah but insult by its own conceptual understanding mm -hmm. is not neutral okay but yeah, saying, like, like, um can i insult you do you think like, yeah, yeah go ahead. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you think, what is this? What's wrong with this guy? He wants to insult me. Because you'd think insulting means to defame me. Mm -hmm. to from, Certain words are like that. Oh, um, can I say, for example, can I, um, I don't know what the easiest word, but something like totally negative. Like, can I say like you are a rapist? Why would I say that? Is it a good thing to be associated with? Oh, I, oh yeah, I am a rapist. Hallelujah. No one would be proud of that. No one would glorify that. No one would be happy and, 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 and say, now let's celebrate it. Because a rapist by this connotation is someone who acts on their will and force their will on someone else by force without their consent and so on. That's not a good thing. So insult, for example, should be taken in that way. Like, why would you do that? So when it comes to religion, we can have hard differences. Sure. You know the example I gave you about the coherency of the concept of God? We say God is so merciful to us that he has given us guidance to all nations, all times, because he's just. And all the nations, when the warners came to them, they had a clear understanding who God is and what they have to do in, to be saved from the hellfire that is there in the future. None of them, prophets, told them about, you know what, God is like a trinity and then Father, Son and Holy Spirit and God is like a half elephant and half man and God is a black man called Krishna. And so, all of this and it came from God because God will be always consistent in his message. Because consistency, because he's one. He hasn't changed. So when he conveyed the message about himself to Abraham, imagine, imagine, Abraham in the day of judgment sees God. God on the throne, someone on the right hand side, and there's a Holy Spirit hovering. He will faint. I would faint if I was Abraham. Because he was the friend of God, and the friend of God, the friend, God didn't tell him who he was, that I had a son as well. So this is what we are saying is, people often don't realize from historical transformation what happens to some of the truths. The truths get corrupted, it gets changed over time. When Moses came upon him be peace, he didn't tell the people to worship him. He told people to worship God. When Christ came, the son of Mary upon him be peace, he didn't tell people to worship him, he says worship God. But what happened? As time went, now I hear Christians saying, worship God through Christ, worship Jesus, and so on and so forth, depending on who you speak to. The one who came to tell you to worship God, he himself has become the object of worship. What a change of turnover of, uh, you know, it's like, you know, a tragedy, what has happened to human history. Who said to worship God only, people are now worshipping him instead. So that's why we're saying is Christianity in the Quran they says they are born lean, they are into their misguidance. So to remove the misguidance to come to the truth is to understand God as God has consistently throughout history and explain about who he was. One and only God, not three in one. There's a difference between one 
3 in 1, 2 in 1, 5 in 20, whatever. They're not equivalent. So Christians need to come back to the God of Jesus, the God of Moses, the God of Abraham. Then we will say, yes, you are now coming on the right track. And the next step is follow the final messenger. If you are a Jew, if you are a Jew, and the messenger prophet Jesus came, your next step as a Jew is to accept him as your prophet, as your messenger, and follow him so that you worship him according to what he has brought through laws God given to him. If you are a Christian, your next step is to know who the final messenger is, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. You don't lose anything. You are now worshiping God as God, who God is in his reality. So this is what we're saying. Islam is that only acceptable ideology, the message, the religion, the way of life that is acceptable to God. The religion of Jesus, Abraham, Moses, Muhammad, peace be upon them all. We're inviting you to that. You're not losing anything to become a Muslim, you're gaining everything. And if we don't accept that, so then we're a Christian and we're if you American, don't accept are that, we your enemy? <laughs> you don't become my enemy because you don't accept something. Okay. If you don't accept Islam, I, I agree you, with you, you, you will have your consequences right. with God in the hereafter. Right. If you are living in an Islamic country, then you will be the non-Muslim citizen in an Islamic country. Back in the past where Islam was implemented, then you would have been the protected citizen in which your life, your honor, your dignity, your wealth, your religion will be protected. protected. Yeah. But today, we don't have an Islamic country where Islam is implemented. And that's why somewhere, some places, the Christian minority may be oppressed. And I don't disagree with you that that might be the case in some places because they're not implementing Islam. That's why people may get oppressed. Muslims are getting oppressed in the Muslim countries themselves, let alone the other minorities who are not Muslims. So, so what are the, what are the sex, sect of the Muslim where uh, you know people are killed, right? You, you know for their beliefs. I mean, right? The, the, I, you have no right to kill someone for their belief just but, because they have a different but, belief, what, what right? Are those, they claim to be Muslim. They claim to follow Allah. Yeah, well, the KKK claim to be Christians, right? And the Lord Jesus is on the claim. Right, right, right. Hmm? It, it's, it's, back. It's, no, where is it? Question. Someone have the bag. No, 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 no. You leave it. Someone took it from me. I hope so. I hope so. Our scholars have been voting against it in the early 90s against people like that. Right. 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 For the summer of the West, suddenly, kind of like that. Yeah? Yeah.